Hello booktube and welcome back to my Blu-ray library tour and this time we're looking at Arrow films uh, a label uh, well they have a number of lines and but what I have is Arrow Academy and Arrow Video and uh, they they um, specialize in uh, I, I guess the majority of their stuff would be cult type films a lot of schlock, uh, you know, slasher uh, stuff, but not just new. Uh, they have older ones like, you know, the, the 60s and 70s, which to me, they're not a huge interest, but they do put out a number of older films that nobody else has, or at least to the, to the quality they have. And they will have, uh, you know, special contents and uh, they will have special editions that have uh uh booklets in however uh most of these don't have booklets uh i think they were they were past that and uh this is the arrow video and this is the hammer uh version of hound of the baskervilles with uh peter cushing and christopher lee and uh that's well, for for Sherlock Holmes fans, that's that's a definite must. And uh, a John Landis film, American Werewolf in London, uh, which uh, I, I love this film. Um, it's, was it early 80s, I think it is? Uh, dates on these are very difficult to see on the back. Um, I need a magnifying glass or better lighting, so I'll skip on dates unless I know them off the top of my head. Um... Uh, or remember them, I should say. And this, this, uh, um, uh, Jenny Agater's in this, um, David Naughton and Griffin Dunn are the two main ones. And there's a bunch of other actors. It's, it's a very good, it's a, it's a good werewolf uh, film, and, and, and it's quite funny. It's, it's got a lot of black humor in it, which I think confused people at the time. The commentary on that isn't the greatest because it's the two actors talking and they don't really say much. Uh, they just sort of, they drool every time Jenny Agater con comes on the screen, they drool over her. I can't blame them, but that's not good for a commentary. Uh, and then this is the uh, 1970s or mid-70s, I think it is, version of invasion of the body snatchers with donald sutherland um oh i can't um it's from the jack finley novel which i'm going to be doing this uh, at some point as the book the film uh but i'll be mostly concentrating on uh it's film or philip kaufman was the director uh, of of this version and uh but i'll be concentrating mostly on the dan i think it's dan siegel uh the 1950s version this one uh is burnt offerings this is 1976 i believe uh and i will be this is this week's uh burn uh book to film and i will just keep that aside so i know where it is to because i have to rewatch that uh in the next day or two um, this is an interesting one. At least I remember it being interesting. Um, this is, um, see, this has the original one and has the booklet in because I bought it at the time, uh, when it came out. Uh, and this is Brotherhood of Satan. Uh, it is, uh, let's try to see here who's in it. Starring, uh, Str Strother Martin, Elku Jones, and... Uh, Anna Capri, and it's directed by Bernard uh, McCavity or something like that. Okay, it's hard to see. Uh, I just remember it being interesting and a bit odd. <laughs> so, um, and I got a very good deal on it, so I decided to to get it and to add to some. Uh, it's seven. I think it's. 60s or 70s horror um ah uh, here here you you can't go wrong with with the marx brothers this is for uh uh 
the four Marx Brothers at Paramount, 1929 to 1933. So we got uh, Duck Soup. We've got Monkey Business and Horse Feathers. Horse, horse Feathers. And the Coconuts and Animal Crackers. And a little slip case. Uh, there are commentaries on them, I think, on all of them. Uh, but there's no booklets, sadly. This one is missing the booklet. I wish I, I was able to get the booklet with this, but I wasn't going to spend, I think it was about 80 pounds more for a little booklet. I can, I'm sure, find um, several books uh, that will tell me more than the little booklet would. Uh, and this is Six Gothic Tales, uh, Vincent Price. And this is all... Uh, the Edgar Allan Poe, not the whole Edgar Allan Poe cycle that was done by uh, um, Roger Corman, but most of them. And since then, I've been able to piece together. I think there was two. Uh, we saw the premature burial, uh, and there's one other one, uh, the Mask of the Red Death, that we'll see eventually here too. That completes this cycle um, for for those. Uh, well, I guess for those who don't know, the, the films are the, the Fall of the House of Usher, The Pit and the Pendulum, Tales of Terror, The Raven, The Haunted Palace, and The Tomb of Lygia. The Haunted Palace, I think, is one that's, that's iffy, uh, whether it's really part of the, uh, cycle or not. I think it's that one. Uh, it's, 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 it's debatable. But they, but these are excellent films. They were made in the '60s, but uh, with color, uh, they're they're just they are wonderful. Now here's a very interesting film. Um, I w I don't know if there was a booklet with this or not. Um, but this one doesn't. This is a sorrow and the pity. It's uh, Marcel Ophlis. It's a four and a half hour portrait. Uh, I'll read it here, uh, of the French town of Clermont-Ferrand under German occupation from 1940 to 44. It is one of the greatest documentaries ever made, as important as Claude uh, Lasman's show. We saw that in the um, in the Masters of Cinema series, that 10-hour uh, ten, ten documentary on the Holocaust. Uh, but it is uh, in its value not just as a film, but as an essential historical record in its own right, not least uh, since its interviews uh, have, are long dead. So this is um, this is quite interesting. Uh, this I think has no. I thought oh no, there's three. Yeah, there's three in here. It's a trilogy. Uh, it's the human condition. Uh, Kobayashi's monumental film. Uh, it's three parts. Um, and again, I don't have the date here. Fifties, I think, or sixties. I, I can't be sure. It's uh, yeah, Masaki Kobayashi. And uh, basically, is one of the towering masterpieces of Japanese and world cinema. This three-part war epic has rarely been seen in the UK, at least partly because of its daunting, gargantuan nine-hour length. Yeah, there you go, nine-hour film. Uh, director Masaki Kobayashi, uh, Harakiri, uh, we saw um, that in the, I think the Masters of Cinema as well, uh, was attracted to Junepi uh, uh Gorakawa's a source novel because he uh, recognized himself in the character of the protagonist. So this looks interesting. And again, I, th I think I've tried to look up the book. I should put that aside again to do it again. I don't think it's available in English, um, sadly, because, but it would be interesting. Oh, uh, I've, one of my favorite Westerns actually of all time. Um, and, um, Based on a really good book as well. Um, 
it's the Oxbow incident. It's William William A. Wellman, uh, and it's Henry Ford, and um, well, it's got Anthony Quinn, uh, Henry Morgan, uh, Dana Andrews, and it's just a fabulous film. Uh, it's it's a it's it's an absolutely fabulous western, and I like it like at the beginning. Uh, Henry Morgan and Henry Fonda ride into this little town over this little, sort of little bridge in a sense, like where there's a culvert underneath it. But they, uh, I think it's, yeah, they, as they're coming across, there's a dog that walks, I think, towards the camera across, across in front of them. And then as the film ends, they cross out and the dog walks back the other way. I just thought that was a nice little touch. Now we get back to Billy Wilder, uh, one of his uh, earliest films, Ginger Rogers and Ray Milan, the major and the minor. Uh, definitely, and well, this has a booklet on it, which is nice. Uh, this is definitely something that probably would not be made today because of the subject matter. Um, but it's uh, it's it's a very good film, uh, nineteen early nineteen thirties. Again, they just some some of these people they don't make things easy to find dates. Uh, and this is like thirty eight or thirty nine. Uh, it's Jamaica Inn. I think this is the last film that uh, the English film that uh, Alfred Hitchcock directed, Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Hara. And it's obviously it's based on the. Uh, the novel by Daphne du Maurier, Jamaica Inn. Uh, and another one of these, the uh, Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake team up with William Bendix, The Blue Dahlia. Uh, this is based on a novel as well, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well... Directed by George Marshall. Uh, it was written the, the. It's written by uh, Raymond Chandler, so I'm not sure if it's based on a book or not. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, uh, it's it's one of their earlier <coughs> uh, team up. Sorry. Uh, um, just seeing if it says here and it's about it. Yeah. But uh, they they were together in the Glass Key, um, um, just uh, several films, film noirs, and a more recent film. Oh, that's that's another uh, Alpha Video one rather than uh, Al, um, Arrow Academy. It is Time Bad? It's Time Bend. It's it's a Terry Gilliam film, uh, John Cleese and and so forth. Sean Connery's even in it. Uh, and it's a, uh, it's a fabulous film. Uh, I remember I went to see that in the cinema, actually. So I enjoyed that. And Peter Laurie, Edward Arnold, and Marion Marsh, Crime and Pun Punishment. It's a Josef von Sternberg, uh, film. Another director I really like. And yes, this is, uh, based on Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Uh, sort of brought up to modern times in the sense of when it was done. And Peter Lorre does a pretty good job. And it's, I guess, in essence, it's, I would say it's, it's got the spirit of, of Dostoevsky's uh, <coughs> uh, novel. But obviously it doesn't have the complexity of it. And uh, Peter Lorre uh, wanted to do this, I think, as well. Um, I think he might have brought it to uh, to Sternberg to do uh, because he he was he was into the classics and he uh, Peter Lorre was uh, he wasn't just your normal uh, heroin addict as time went on. Uh, another great a uh, great western, the Far Country. James Stewart, Ruth Roman. And, uh, uh, 
It's an Anthony Mann film. Uh, it's 50s. It's a colored one, but it's it's a uh, it's it's a fabulous uh, western. Ah, another uh, Preston Sturgis. Like I'll watch any Preston Sturgis film. And this is Sullivan's Travels. Um, it's it's just fabulous. It's Veronica Lake, uh, and what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Oh, Joel McRae. Yeah, uh, it has the usual gang that's that works with uh, uh, Preston Sturgis, William Demarest, uh, Franklin Pangborn, Porter Hall, um, Robert Warwick. Warwick, it should be. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just a fabulous uh, film uh, set in the Depression, and there's some really really weird and wonderful scenes in it, uh, and it's a, it's it's a bit of a black comedy as well. Just well worth your your time. Now this year is the last film that I had seen in a cinema in a theater in Canada be, before I came to the UK here. So we're talking. Um, 17, 18 years ago that this came out. Uh, and it was the last, like, I, I, I've i seen silent films and some other classic stuff, but not sort of first-run films. I have not seen since Gosford Park, uh, Robert Altman's Gosford Park. Uh, it's just, I think it's just a fabulous, uh, um, fabulous film. And... Uh, it's it's you know Robert Altman uh, was is a great director, and uh, to say it's same the the person who wrote the script for this um, if I can see his name here, uh, Julian Fellows uh, that did uh, what was that? Uh, oh, it, it, oh, jeez, I, I I I had I had the name. It was a TV series, uh, Downton Abbey. He created Downton Abbey, uh, which the first season or so of that was good, but then it just, the writing got a little away from, I think. Um, Hold Back the Dawn, uh, uh, Mitchell Leeson film, uh, Charles Boyer, Olivia de Havilland, and Paulette Goddard. As I say, any um, anything with Paulette Goddard, I am willing to look at. And, uh, uh, it's written, yeah, it's, uh, written, it's a good film, it's, it's directed by Mitchell Leeson, uh, but it was written by, uh, Billy Wilder and, uh, Charles Brackett, even though Billy Wilder didn't quite like how his stuff was changed, and that's what prompted him at, to actually go into directing, because then, uh, he could direct it the way he wanted it to. And nobody would change it on him. Uh, uh, another, yeah, Robert Siodmak. We've come across him already from uh, the, uh, the People on Sunday. Uh, and he was film noir director. And here's another crime one with French Hot Tone and Ella Rain's Phantom Lady. It's not sort of a... It's got almost a... Uh, horror type or supernatural but it's it's from what i remember it's not there's none of that in it it's it's just simply uh a crime uh crime one where somebody gets accused uh wrongly for for a murder um and another film noir uh too late for tears um and it's got dan jure again um he it was, you know, when he started acting, it was in his, uh, in his contract. He's in every film noir film. <laughs> um, who directed this? I can't remember now. Uh, what does it say? Oh, this is really bugging me now because I can't remember who directed this. Uh, 
No, I don't see it here. For some reason, they are bad with with uh, giving information or not giving any information, as it may be. Anyway, um, too late for tears. I I can't remember who directed this. Sorry, <laughs> you have to look it up if you need to. To need to know. And uh, great, uh, I like it as a Christmas film. Um, I just wish it had the booklet. Oh, it does have the booklet. Yes, it does. I didn't think this had the booklet in it. The Bells of St. Mary's uh, with uh, Bing Crosby and uh, Ingrid Bergman. Uh, it's a Leo McCary film. And this, it's sort of a sequel to uh, Leo McCary and, and uh, Big Crosby's uh, uh, Going My Way. He plays the same character. And, oh, here's the other one, the Glass Key uh, with uh, Veronica Lake in it. Um, and... Uh, Alan Ladd, uh, Brian Don Levy, uh, we've come across already before uh, in other films. Uh, it's uh, from the novel by Dashiell Hammett, and uh, it's uh, directed by Stuart Hessler, uh, a director that I'm not that familiar with at all. Uh, this is an interesting film. Uh, it's Burt Lancaster, The Train, uh, directed by... Uh, John Frankenheimer, and let's see who else is on here. Oh, right, uh, Paul Schofield, uh, I can't read the names, the rest of the names here. Um, it's it's basically uh, France. It, it's a really it's a really interesting film. It's uh, France, nineteen forty four, art lover and financier. Uh, uh, or fanatical, not no, sorry, art lover and fanatical Nazi colonel von uh, Waldenheim has plundered a Paris museum for its masterpieces, including works by Van Gogh, uh, Picasso, Cezanne. His intention is to have them transported by rail to Berlin, but one man stands in his way. So that's that's a very good film. Okay, well, that's it. there ends the uh, Academy, uh, Arrow, Arrow Academy and Arrow, Arrow Films. Now, we've got a few more. That was off the shelf up here. So, I think, there, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, there's a few more here. Uh, and then this is, this is actually all silence, this one here. So, that'll be uh, an interesting one. And then this here is just miscellaneous. And I think that's that ends my Blu-rays. So we're nearing the end. There's a bit of well, there's miscellaneous here, and then miscellaneous there. So we'll next actually go to to the miscellaneous stuff, and then we'll end on a high point with the silence. Why not? <laughs> anyway, take care, Booktube.